for us here in this place. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I followed after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching yeah. forth unto those things which are before. Amen. I press Amen. toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God yeah. in Amen. Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. There needs to be a pressing tonight, a pushing on. Come on. Praise the Lord. Some folks are just taking a ride in the wagon. <laughs> some other folks are, are pushing the wagon. Come on. Praise the Lord. We need to get some more folks out pushing. Hallelujah. So we're going up a hill so we can gather up some, some speed. And we've got lots of people to reach for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if there's anybody that needs to be in the wagon, it's sinners. Amen. Don't need any saints in the wagon. Right. Saints need to be pushing and pulling the wagon. Yeah. So there'd be room for the saints in the wagon. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Because don't you know, saints need to be on the wagon. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Come on. Uh, already, praise the Lord in our heart. All right. We see here that Paul's telling us that he pressed towards a mark. But what was that mark? It was a mark of perfection in Christ yes. Jesus. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, we talk about goals in our life, but that's not what Paul's talking about. Not a goal in this life, but a goal in spiritual life before the Lord. Amen. Praise God. That to be perfect in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yes, you see here, if, if these words are kind of a little, you got to look at it real close to see what in the world Paul's talking about here. He said, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. What he's saying here is he, he was in pursuit of the Lord. Yeah. He was reaching out and pressing forward to reach the Lord. But while he was pressing forward to reach the Lord, the Lord apprehended him. He thought he was the one that was reaching out. But while he was reaching, trying to find the Lord, the Lord got him. Hallelujah. You know you can read about it in Acts chapter 9. Yes, you can. Oh. Now, Saul at the time, his name was, referred to in the scripture, as Saul, he was in pursuit after Christians yeah. to persecute them. He had the authority of the chief priests that, that had signed the papers telling them that he could find all Christians right. that, that he found in Damascus and yeah. send them back to Jerusalem for yeah. trial. That's what he was about. He was about what he thought was the business of God. <laughs> Yeah. He was in pursuit doing the business of God. That's what he believed. Yeah. But while he was on that way, doing his best to do something for God, oh, that there, yeah, it was a terrible, devastating thing he was doing. Yeah. Come on. But yet, he was in pursuit of God. Yeah. There's people all around us today that's struggling to find God. Yeah. 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 But he's not lost. My oh my. We're the ones that are lost, not yeah. God. Yeah. But we're lost, but people talk about finding Jesus. My oh my. I'm glad he found me. Because I was in darkness and wouldn't have known which way was up to look for Jesus. But when I didn't know which way to go, which way to turn to, what to do, he found me. The scripture says that he came to seek and to save them that are lost. Yeah. Yeah. So he's looking for us. He's looking for all those sinners yeah. out there waiting for them to get to that place where they were called on his name. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
There's everyone out there is in pursuit of something. They're, they're trying to apprehend. They're trying to get. They're trying to get a hold of something. Yeah. Something that will satisfy their soul. Something that will satisfy body. Something that will keep body and soul together. And these yeah. days of their head that we're all struggling and trying to get a hold of that thing. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. That like Paul was trying to get a hold of some greatest things in his life that comes through God. Right. But when he was there going to the, on the road to Damascus, we know that he was struck down and blinded by great lights. Yeah. And as he was there on the ground, he began to call all out, say, Who art thou, Lord? Yeah. You know, when you see a light like that, when you're in darkness, you don't question that it's the Lord or not. Right. He knew it was the Lord. Right. And he also knew he didn't know him. Yeah. My oh my. Yeah. Come on. I'll tell you, when you got a sinner that's coming to the Lord that don't that says that he don't know the Lord, then you've got somebody that is hungry and reaching out for God. That's right. Amen. I've had folks come to the altar before wouldn't tell me how to pray. Yeah. And they're living in sin. Yeah. So we understand what I'm saying. When we're in that place of darkness, we don't know who the Lord is. Yeah. And there's folks out there right now believe that they're serving the Lord, but it's not the Lord Jesus Christ. No. Not right. the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on now. Oh, they want to try to get to you by talking Jesus this, Jesus that, and God, 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 God. I tell you, I tried in my language and in my message anymore to mention Jesus Christ just as many times as I yeah. can and not just to talk about God. Because you can talk about God for so long and, and please so many ears that just want to hear about God. But what they just really don't want to hear is the name that is above all names. Yeah. The name that is the only name given whereby men must be saved. Yeah. And that's the name Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who is God? Yeah. Hallelujah. Who is the Alpha yeah. and Omega, the beginning yeah. of the end, the first and the last, the author and the finish? Oh, he's the all in all is the great I am. That's Jesus. The Christ. Hallelujah. That's who it is. Praise God. And that's who Paul was discovering right there on the road. Who art thou, Lord? I know you're the Lord. I know you're higher than me. I know you're the light. So you might, you have to be the Lord. But who are you? Yeah. And he said, I am Jesus. Come on, brother. Break it. He didn't say, I am the Father. No. He didn't say, I am the Son. No. He didn't say, I am the Holy Ghost. No. He said, I am Jesus. When he gave him his name, he asked him for his name. That's what he was looking for. He didn't ask him for his title. Didn't ask him for his address. He knew his address. He was yeah. high and lifted up. He was the bright and morning star. What he wanted to know was his name. And he said, I am Jesus. Hallelujah. While Paul was trying to reach a higher place in God, not knowing how to get there, he thought he was doing it by works, but while he was endeavoring to do that, he was apprehended or something got a hold of him. Hallelujah. Something got a hold of him and rattled his cage till he, he had a complete turnaround. Yeah. Praise God. That's as a pastor said, that's called repentance. Yeah. He had a complete turnaround. Damascus, and yes. you will be told what you must do. do. Come on. Woo! Power! Yeah. Oh, yes. Come on, brother. 
Hallelujah. And he, when he met the man of God there in Damascus, he told him what he must do. Yeah. Said, I'm here to lay hands on you that you're healed of your blindness Come on. and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Some would say, well, of course he's apostle. He has to be full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. You're right. Hallelujah. But we're all part of the body of Christ. Yeah. We all have that same thing. We need to be filled with the Holy yeah. Ghost. I'll tell you what you must do. My oh my. Hallelujah. He was in pursuit of it, but it got a hold of him. Praise God. So you know it's important sometimes. We don't think we really got a handle on this. That's the way we say it in Missouri, and I think some of you said down, down here that way. Ain't got a handle on it. We don't know, quite understand what's going on. Ain't got a grip. My oh my. <laughs> what we need to understand is he's the Lord. Yes, he is. In Jehovah Jireh. I'm the created being. Yeah. He's the creator. Yeah. He's God. I'm man. Yeah. He's the Lord. He's yeah. my Lord that makes me his servant. Yeah. 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 A servant. He don't have to explain everything to me. I'm his servant. Right. He gives me what I have need of for my chores of the day. He gives me this day my daily bread. Yeah. And I can go about doing the business of that day that the yeah. master has called me to do. I don't need to understand the whole book. There's some folks that refuse to come to the Lord because they can't understand the Bible. Right. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. They're still trying to get a handle on it. Still trying to understand the mysteries. Still playing around in Daniel and Revelation. Instead of getting in the Gospels. Oh, yeah. Well, you find out the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection yeah. that will change your life. They're playing around with the mysteries of the word. Praise God. But brethren, we need to realize that that which we're pursuing is pursuing us. Yeah. Yeah. You're wanting more God? God is wanting more you. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. What a good deal is that? when he said, I am persuaded I am to believe. <laughs> if there's nothing that happened in your conversion to persuade you that you was con being converted by the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to get a hold of the real thing or let him get a hold of you. Hallelujah. Get out of those, uh, the, those doctrines and those formal things and those traditions and let Jesus get a hold on you. As much as some of us may think, or even as we try, it's difficult for us not to get a hold of God. That's right. Amen. We want to get a hold of Him so we can control Him. Anything mankind gets a hold of, they put it in a box. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Gee, the, the Lord talked to Martin Luther hundreds and hundreds of years ago and told him the just shall live by faith. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The just shall live by faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. The great reformation yeah. began yeah. then. Yeah. Hallelujah. But the Lutherans didn't get very far because they built a box right there. Yeah. yeah. Right. You can go to their assembly right now and visit the box. You don't have to go to the archives of the library. Just go to a Lutheran church. And that's as far as they got. 
that little inspiration that Luther received from the Lord. Yeah. It was needful at the time. But nobody told him to build a box. No, no. You know, this isn't... I, I, forgive me, I'm always too long-winded in here. But this isn't the beginning of that thing. The beginning of it was in the Bible. Yeah. Amen. After they got to the promised land, the first thing David wanted to do was build the Lord a house. I want to put you in a box. Yeah. Ain't many there. Wanted to put him in a box. What did the Lord have to say? Have I asked you to build me a house? Have I told you I was unhappy from going from tent to tent and traveling all over with you? Did I tell you I was displeased with that? I didn't ask you to build me a house. No. But man wanted to put him in a box. Yes, Lord. And they literally put him in a box. It was called the Ark of the Covenant. Yes, it was. I did. Now they could see the Shekinah glory cloud over the tabernacle yeah. and you and I, spirit filled, we get excited about the Shekinah glory cloud over the tabernacle. But I want you to know what they were, they were all worshiping about was the Ark of the Covenant that sent in the holiest of holies that none of them got to see. Yeah. 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 But the high priest. My, oh, my, they put him in a box. The God that delivered them out of Egyptian bondage, by the blood of the Lamb, he delivered them. Yeah. And they take a God that fills the universe and try to stuff him in a box. Yeah. My, oh, my, that's a cubit and a half wide and two cubits long. <laughs> and just... Put a big God that covers the universe in a little box. Yeah. Sounds strange. It started, it was a beautiful box. It was gold plated box. Makes yeah. no difference how pretty the box right. is. If you're putting God in it, that's the only place God's going to be for you. Right. Amen. Well, when they needed, after they put God in the box, every time they wanted God, they had to go get him out of the box. Right. And read the word. Mm. Right. Now, truly, God was not only in the box, all right? No. But right. as far as they're concerned, as far as their faith, as far as their belief, oh, if the Ark of the Covenant came out, we was going to have victory. Yeah. Bring out the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. We're going to have victory if the Ark comes out on the field. Well, God was already out on the field. Yes, he was. David didn't need the Ark of the Covenant out there when he faced Goliath because he came in the name of the Lord God. Yeah. Hallelujah. He came in his name. Hallelujah. And he knew the name. Yeah. And he had tried and tested the power of God and knew that God was going to take the field that day and slay Goliath, and he did. Yes. The ark wasn't there. No. <laughs> but God was. God was. We could go on this route, you know. We could go, well, there were some great, two great brothers in this Reformation, the Wesley brothers. John Wesley particular. Now, they, they were some good folks to read about. These guys finally began to take the gospel out of the box in the church and took it out there on the street where the sinners were. Right. Oh, where they was less restricted. They began, began to preach the word of God on the street. Oh, and they were condemned for it because it was just inappropriate, improper. It belongs in the box. Right. Lord have mercy on that. Come on, brother. Has anything changed today? No, sir. No. You start talking to people about yeah. Jesus and all that. Go, go to church and do that. Come on. Want to praise the Lord? You want to pray? Oh, do that in church. Go to the church house and do that. Yeah. People still wanting to segregate God in a little box somewhere. No matter how great the cathedral is, if that's where you got to go to get with God, then you put him in a box. No matter how gold-plated it is, it's still not the dwelling place of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We need to realize what is getting a hold of us and that we're not getting a hold of Him. Right. Come on. When I first received the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, 
Now, I've got to say the baptism of the Holy Ghost so that people understand what I'm talking about. But I think that, I believe that the word plainly teaches that the infilling of the Holy Ghost is the baptism of the yeah, Holy Ghost. Right. And receiving the Holy Ghost is the baptism of the yeah, Holy Ghost. Right. But because men could not control God, let me step back. Remember when Philip evangelized Samaria... And he baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sin, like Peter had informed the church to do under the anointing of God. Amen. Then he called for the apostles to come down and lay hands on them. Why? So they would receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. These, these weren't a bunch of prophets or a, a bunch of preachers. These were church folks. They needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The apostles come down and laid hands on them and they received. But there was one dude in here called Simon who was a sorcerer. And he offered Peter money. Yeah, I want to buy the ability to lay hands on whoever I want to and they receive the Holy Ghost. You see, he was going to put God in a box. He seen what the Spirit of the living God coming in somebody was doing the change that was going in their life. Just think about what the price he could charge for that blessing, for that life-changing event, what he could charge for if somebody wanted the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you just give me an upteen amount of money and I'll lay my hands on you and you receive the Holy Ghost and I'll still be a power and I'll have this under my authority. If you don't pay me the money, you don't get the Holy Ghost. This comes without charge, brother. Yes, Hallelujah. That's why Peter looked at him and said he had no part in this. He told him to take his money and go. He needed to repent. That's what he told him. He needed to repent. And hopefully God will forgive you. But we see the same thing today when you talk about people needing the baptism of the Holy Ghost in their lives. They'll tell you that, well, we don't believe that. In our little box, we don't believe it that way. Right. Come on now. Well, what is the Bible saying about it? That's what we're talking about. It's time for us not to try to get a hold of him, but to allow him to get a hold of us. And it will be different when he's got a hold of us. Then it won't matter how many boxes have him in out there. We'll be outside the box living free in our liberty in Jesus Christ. In the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus Christ is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. And since if you got, and I don't have time to just show you all that love too, but I ain't going to take the time. Pastor can do that. If you don't understand how that can be, that's the way it is. So I'm telling you, when the scripture talks about receiving Christ, yeah. the scripture is talking about receiving the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The body, the natural body of Christ doesn't come in me. No. The no. Spirit, the spirit comes in me. And there's only one spirit, a spirit of the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ. And he comes in. So when he comes in, we're being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And we speak in other tongues. Hallelujah. That's not out of a box. No. Hallelujah. Well, it is outside the box, <laughs> but it ain't put in a box. It's in the Word of God, and that's what we need to be in pursuit of, the real Jesus Christ, yeah. the Spirit of the living God yeah. that's not con confined by the traditions of men, right. by the doctrines by the word. and oh. denominations that men would try to separate us and say, yeah. that's all right, you can believe that way if you want to, just go in your box. But over here in our box, we believe it this way. My God. My, yeah. my, my. Help us, Lord. Praise God. And if you want to know what the, what the Wesley brothers believed and what they preached, just go to any Methodist church. Yeah. Come on. Because they got stuck in a box too. Amen. Yeah. They tried to keep trying to get out of the box. Uh -huh. They asked 
Pentecost preachers to come in. Sometime the pastor for a while. I knew a one this Pentecost man that they asked the pastor for a while. But they soon put that lid back on the box. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not against these things, folks. I'm saying they were good up to the point until they tried to put God in a box. Right. And not Amen. continue following after the Lord. When we build a house for God to dwell in... We've overstepped ourselves right. because the only house that he wants to dwell in is God. this house. Is your heart, is yeah. your body. That is the yeah. temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's, it's not a brick and mortar home. It, it's, it's not a, a frame built house. It's not any of these metal buildings that we worship God in. But this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Our bodies. Yeah. Praise God, and there's where God wants to dwell. From the very beginning, yeah. that's where he wanted to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to let this get a hold of us. Yeah. Let it get a hold of us. Praise yeah. God. Hallelujah. So that we will be persuaded in this way, so we won't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine that comes along. That we realize yeah. what we receive that conversion. We receive the real. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. There was a man called Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. Yes. Yeah. He was a de devout man that feared God. Yes, he was. Come on. Very much. Oh, hallelujah. His prayers went up as a memorial before God. My, oh, my. Such a man he was, but he was a soldier, a centurion. He was a Gentile soldier, not an Italian man. But he was still a good man. He was so good, he was in pursuit of the Holy God. He was trying to get a hold. Cornelius send to the house of Simon the Tanner for yeah. one called Peter that resides there. Yeah. And he yeah. will tell you yeah. what you ought to right. do. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. he's in pursuit of God. Yeah. He's trying to apprehend oh, God. Oh, yeah. And here an angel shows up and says, go, go there and find Peter. And, and he'll tell you, yeah. Joppa, bring him back to your yeah. house. And he'll tell you. Praise the Lord. And Peter come back. Nice yeah. story in there, but Peter come back with his servants. Yeah. Yes, he did. And as soon as, oh, that man was a preacher. As soon as he walked in the door, Peter started preaching. Oh! My, oh my. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He walked in the door. Cornelius fell down to worship him. Yeah. And Peter lifted him up and said, I also am a man that started preaching the gospel of Jesus. was finding out what he ought to do. Hallelujah. And when Peter got to the part, after he described the suffering of Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, after he said, he described that, then he said, and whoever believes in his name, yeah. right about then, something got a hold of Cornelius. Yeah. And all those sitting in the house yes, with him. Oh, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They were filled with the Holy Ghost while Peter was yet speaking. Oh, hallelujah. Peter didn't even have to go around laying hands on him to receive the Holy Ghost. While he was yet speaking, something got a hold of the household of Cornelius and they began to speak in other tongues. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Then after all the chaos settled down, Peter says, can any man forbid water? Oh, hallelujah. That these be baptized. Hallelujah. They were baptized. Praise God. Something got a hold of them. They didn't know 
what it was going to be. Right. They just knew they wanted more. Come on, brother. And from the beginning of the movement of the Pentecost yeah. movement, now let's try to keep it out of a box, but from the beginning of that movement, that's what people understood. It was something that was, that was a God thing that got a hold of you. They wanted more God. Yeah. The people that were seeking were seeking God. Right. And what happened when they were seeking God? They were filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. If anybody will get out the little box of traditions and beliefs and simply seek after the living God, yeah. they'll find themselves yeah. baptized in the Holy yeah. Ghost, speaking in other tongues, because yeah. the Holy Ghost will get a hold of them. Yeah. Jesus will get a hold of them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus himself said it very simply in the Beatitudes. He said, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. Filled with what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's what you'll be filled with if you hunger and thirst after righteousness. Praise God. But in order to be filled, you can be hungry and you can be thirsty. But if you're going to sit in your box... It still happen. won't work. Right. We've got to get out of our traditions, out of our ideas, out of what, the way we think God is going to do it, when he's going to do it, how he's going to do it, and we're going to say, okay, God, you can do it this way. I'm going to come down to the altar tonight, and I'm going to kneel down, and boom, you're going to fill me with the Holy Ghost, I'm going to get up and leave. Well, don't even bother to come. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only reason you should bother to come just to find out for sure, not just my word, but find out it's not going to work for you. Right. You're not going to tell God how to do his business. Amen. Right. He is the Lord. When we come as Paul did, who art thou, Lord? Who art thou, Lord? My, oh, my. Hallelujah. When I came this way, I repented of my sin, but I refused to be baptized in Jesus' name. Come on, come on. Was unnecessary. I'd been taught that. My box was strong. I knew exactly the scriptures to use to show that it was unnecessary today. Mm. And I was glad I was brought that way. Uh -huh. Because now that so many are turning that way, I see the foolishness of it, right. the danger of it, and the demonic move of it to get us away Amen. from water baptism. That's right. Come on. Uh, come on. My oh my. Yes. My oh my. You just go out there and poke people that call themselves Christians. Ask them, have you been water baptized? Right. What? No. Some of them will not even know what you're talking about. Right. They won't know what baptism is. Thank God you're in a place that knows what water baptism is. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Praise God that we have a knowledge of that. Unfortunately, it's, it's getting to be less and less of us that know that. For six years, I sought after God. That's yeah. what we're talking about, seeking God. Right. Seeking after more God. I needed more God. I needed more God. I needed more deliverance. I needed more strength. I was in church four and five times every week. This happened since the, my age of 13. I repented. From 13 to 19, I was in church after church. My home church only had church Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every weekend was revival. <laughs> Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. when the pastor came down to open church. So I had those days covered, but then he was gone all the way. So I needed something through the week. So I was going to other churches through the week. So I was in church four to five times at least every week. Yeah. Sometimes more if there was revival. Yeah. And every time I was in church, one thing I did was to seek for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, I could not lay down and sleep at night because I knew I needed more of God. I knew I needed the Holy Ghost baptism in my life even though I was refusing regeneration by baptism of water in Jesus' name. I was refusing that. Six long years. A person 
seeking after God for that long just gets tired. Yeah. Yeah. So I was tired. I can't tell you how many numbers of people were filled with the Holy Ghost at the same altars I was seeking at. Right. My, oh my, it seemed like every night I went, somebody else was receiving the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. My, oh my. Hallelujah. But I finally wore down. I was in pursuit of this. I was trying to apprehend Christ. Yeah. <laughs> And I was in a church in Rolla, Missouri. And after seeking for the Lord for I don't know how many times I'd sought the Lord. It doesn't really matter except it was my heart ahead and I was seeking Him. But after that, I was done that night. I got up and told the pastor who had never talked to me about water baptism. Amen. Now he was a one God apostolic preacher. Yeah. But he had never spoke to me. He never told me, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Well, he was listening to the Lord because had he, I would have told him what he can do with water baptism and how unimportant it was. Unfortunately, I could do that, which was all wrong to do it, so I'm glad he not mentioned it because he was a, a beautiful man of God. But that night after that service, I said, would you baptize me? <laughs> he, he had no idea what had brought me to that place and didn't need to know he just said yep let's get in the car <laughs> praise God he never did talk to me about it but I just believed God had been talking about it to him he was all ready to go down to the creek <laughs> praise the Lord so we went down to the creek and I went down a water baptism in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ Now, she raised me in that tradition. Her father had taught her. When I repented, she handed me all kinds of brochures and tracts and little booklets that my grandfather had written about this stuff for me to read. So I dutifully read them, understood them, and believed them. So I was bound up by this tradition so much, but I was struggling to reach more of God so much that my mother even told me one day. My mother told me, she said, you know, if you think being baptized, we had never discussed it that was water baptism was a problem. We never discussed it at all. But out of the blue, one day she says, if you think it will help to be baptized, go ahead and be baptized. Man, that was almost like an act of God in itself. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't, not for a few more years. <laughs> The struggle went on until that night I was baptized. Hallelujah. That was a Sunday night and I was in college so I had to go be, at, be back in the dorm and I had to be ready for school the next day so it wasn't until the following Sunday that I got back in church and I was ready for more church. Hallelujah. We got in church and service was getting to the altar call and as soon as they opened that music I was up there seeking God. I wasn't the only one. There were several more. I hope this isn't boring you. I'm just trying to show you how you're struggling for something and Jesus is reaching you too. Even though you no longer know how it's done, you just hunger and thirst and seek. And then he'll show up. He'll get a hold of you. Praise God. I had been at the altar, as I said, and heard so many people receive the Holy Ghost. I'd be kneeling down there praying and Calling on God, and they start calling, they got it, they got it, they got it, they got it. And I'm like, who got it this time? <laughs> man, oh man, and I peek out one eye and see somebody just getting all excited and speaking in tongues. I say, oh, they got it. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes two or three of them got it, but Harry no got it. But that night, but that night as we was praying there, there were several of us at the altar. And, and, and uh, oh, I heard those usual words again. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. And I want you to, want you to know this really happened while they were saying this. 
I was thinking in my mind, oh, who's got it now? <laughs> so I gave it a listen. I said, that sounds like me speaking in tongues. <laughs> got a hold of me that night. I had been reaching out after him oh and when I was down to my last struggle, didn't think it was ever going to happen to me, didn't think it was going to come. Roosh, brother, it just come in and fill me. Hallelujah. And I became obedient to his word. Praise God. His word. Hallelujah, I was buried in his name. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Think how much farther I've been along if I've been baptized in Jesus' name. Along five years earlier, anyhow, would have been nice. Hallelujah. I could have been preaching this gospel a lot longer, a little more than been at it now.